All right, let's take a look at some basic autonomous on our little robot here. Now, like I showed in the last video, basic robot, we've got a claw system, we've got a lifting system, and we've got a drive system. Um, all of which we'll be able to program with some really basic things. If I pop back into my VexIQ software here, and I'm gonna take a look at what I've got set up. So currently from the last video, I've got my drivetrain set up on motor one, six with the gyro and seven. I've got my claw and I've got my arm and then I've got my controller. Now I've disconnected my controller for this, this activity. And what's gonna happen, if you leave this file in here, it's going to always look for the controller and not start. So I'm just gonna delete the controller because I don't need it. This is an autonomous program. So that's good, we're gonna bounce back here. First thing I wanna do with, with my little program is move the claw forward to close it. So I've got a couple options here. Under my motion tab, I've got spin claw forward. Well, what'll happen if I use that is it's just gonna spin forward forever and ever and ever. I've got spin claw forward for 90 degrees. That will move the motor attached to the claw 90 degrees. So not necessarily the actual claw because I've got some reduction in that, but it'll move the motor 90 degrees. Spin claw to position 90 degrees. This is gonna use the internal encoder value. Assuming that at zero, it would move the claw 90 degrees to match the, the same as the block above. But if it's not set at zero, it might go somewhere where you don't want it to go. We've got stop the claw, and then we've got some set positions, which we're not gonna worry about right now. So essentially, I want to spin the claw forward for 90 degrees. So I'm gonna grab that. I've got claw forward 90 degrees. I could change options here, so turns, that's revolutions of the motor. I can switch from forward to reverse, and I could grab another thing. So we'll leave it like that. I'm gonna download that to the robot. And if I look at it and hit run, we should see that claw close. So there you go. So that was 90 degrees of the motor. Not ideal. So let's say change that to 180 degrees and I'll just stop the program. Move that back. We'll download that again and run again. And we should see that arm moving a little further this time. So there you go. So that's basically just moving that a simple motor. Now within this program, let me just bring this back down. Um, so I've got my claw closing. The next step that I think I will want to do is I want to lift that arm up. So if I pop back in here, I've got spin claw forward 90 degrees. We're going to drop that back in, but this time I'm going to say the arm and I've got quite a bit of reduction on my arm. So let's just say I'm gonna do this turns and we're gonna do one turn of the motor, so 360 degrees. Um, with my gearing, I think it would have to turn probably a few times to actually lift the arm all the way up. So claw spinning forward, or his claw's gonna close and then the arm's gonna go up. Hopefully I've got my arm set in the right position. If I download this to the robot again, and we'll go to run. We should see that claw close and the arm lift up. So you're seeing a lot more motion going there. We'll stop that, that'll come back down. Just bring this down. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do, you picked up your object, you need to put it somewhere. Um, so we're gonna go to drivetrain now and we can start adjusting what the drive's going to do. Let's move that cord out of the way. So I want to, let's say, drive forward for 200 mils. I'm, I'm going to change that to 100 because, again, I'm on my coffee table. Don't want it to fall off. So if I drive forward for 100 millimeters, it's going to take this as a measurement of the wheels. So remember when we did the drivetrain here, we set our wheel size. It's using this to measure the distance. So our wheel size is 200. So here, 100 is just half a rotation. So it's gonna drive forward. 
once it's done the drop off. So let's say we want it to turn to the right or the left. Let's say turn to the right for 90 degrees. So the robot's going to drive forward a bit, then turn to the right 90 degrees. So let's let's see what happens here. So I'm going to go download. I'm also going to just open this claw back up. I don't have a means of dealing with that yet. Um, this code is based on you making sure your robot is perfect when it starts a match. All right, so I've got that. I've downloaded. If I come back to run, we should see there's our object picking up, there's our arm, there's our driving, and there's our turning and running into my computer. All good, all that we plan to do. So by just building up some of these basic blocks, you can get a pretty, pretty simple autonomous routine going on. Now there's no feedback with this, but you've got a robot that can pick something up, it can move, it can go around, it can drop something off. Um, if we wanted this to drop at the end, we could always come back up here and say, okay, well we want um, spin claw in reverse for 90 degrees, and that's gonna open the claw back up and drop our object. So real simple, that is the most basic level of autonomous programming we have within VexIQ.